taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking taste buds. Right. Hey folks, welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds. Flying solo again today without Sal Volcano. He's taking care of business. Don't you worry about it. He'll be back soon enough. But for now, it's just me and my phone and my buddy Dan Soder. <laughs> Dan Soder guest hosting with us today. Dan. I, I could, in my insecure brain, work up a scenario to think that Sal had a problem with me. Oh no. I, ca- I called He's you. had a multitude of podcasts that I've never been on, and I finally get on Taste Buds. He's and had, it's you that invite me. He's only had two, three podcasts. One of them, That's a multitude. No, that none of, I mean, one of them was popular with Q, but no, none of us knew he had it. Oh, I didn't even know that one. Honestly, I didn't even know he had that one. None of us did. He, then he's got this one, and then he's got the one with Chris. Yeah. Uh, I've only been on. I the can't one, get spit at. I've by only Sal been on Volcano. the one with. Uh, <laughs> I've only been on Hey Babe when Sal was absent. That's what I mean, dude. Yeah. So, you know. It's, Sal is the nicest guy in the world until you realize he's a Bond villain. We talked about it on the last podcast. He couches everything in niceties, but there's really something else going I on. I think there. there's real heat between Sal and I. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's we heat. Got real heat. There's heat, dude. The, uh, uh, I, think cause he knows, I think he knows what the take I'm coming in here with, and I don't think he want to be around <laughs> here for it. He... Uh, well, he he when he when he when I knew he wasn't going to be here, you were the first guy I called because yeah. we've been trying to get you on. Because you knew he wasn't going to be here. <laughs> no, I just knew it was like a good opportunity like, for a guest. Like, like, he's not going to be here, so I knew ex- yeah. immediately. Yeah, you know, exactly. call you up exactly. Um, so yeah, so here we are. I've been wait. I love this podcast. Thank you. As a pothead, uh-huh. this podcast is built for me. It's all you could ever have wanted. Yeah, I want. I've always wanted. I always wanted food wars. Uh, I I love it. It it is uh str- more stressful than you'd think it would be sometimes. <laughs> With the research, the yeah. tasting yeah. research. I don't do any research, but I just uh, it's just the argument. It gets heated. It gets yeah. hot. It gets hot sometimes. I could easily number one. I know you, right? And I know Sal. And I know that how much you care about food. I'm surprised at how many weed enthusiasts like yourself uh, enjoy the show because I would always think that like. I, I, I haven't been a weed smoker in many years, but I would f- feel like, oh, my God, all the yelling would be, like, too much. Like, no, because you're it's it's fun yelling. It's not, okay. like, it's not a combative. It's, like, a peaceful energy. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, you're, like, you guys are peacefully yelling about yeah, food. Yeah, we're, dis- we're not talking about SCOTUS. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, not getting into yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's too much yelling. There's already enough yelling outside, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine with yelling if it's about food or wrestling. Right. I wish you could tell or that. video games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Childlike right. things. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. I'm starting, I'm announcing it again. Oh. I'm starting a solo podcast. It's going to have its own channel on YouTube, <sighs> its own Patreon. It's called Down, Down with Joe DeRosa. I had a podcast years ago called Down with Joe DeRosa. That was a different format. This is a new relaunch of the podcast. Me solo, movie discussion, discussing all my collectibles, discussing video games, discussing food. It's going to be a real show and tell type of a deal. So, What's your uh, collectibles? Well, you know, I buy video a, games. I know I buy a lot of video games. I buy a lot of uh, Blu-rays and box sets and things like that. Why video game systems? Why Blu-rays? If I can ask you, I like owning it, dude. But the technology is fleeting. It's not. Not if you have the technology to play the technology. Yeah, but then if someone breaks in your house, it's going to look like an old Radio Shack. Good. He's going to have. He's going to have a bunch Good. of old. Good, and when the grid goes down, I'm going to have all the movie power. Yeah, and then you're going to get killed because you're going to need a generator. <laughs> yeah. Listen. That's you, don't a- think about, you don't think about when the water wars hit? <laughs> you're going to need a fucking generator, bud. And you're not going to be able to play with none of your things. I'm going to pedal my I got my exercise, but my Bowflex <laughs> bike <laughs> right after go. my PS5. You just go and you're and like, pedal it. all right, this is one level of God of War. Yeah. I, can, I can get one objective done on God of War. I'm telling you, dude. Like, I'm never in a pinch, man. I'm never in a pinch for what I want to love. Like, and when I want to love great. it and enjoy it, it's there. Streaming service. I use streaming services all the time. All the time. I love all technology. I just love all of it, though. What about moving? It's not. I'm, Dan, I don't have, you know. You're talking like I have, uh, you know, like. like Collectibles? No, but I'm saying, like, 
You have collect. You have multiple collectibles. That means I don't have, to I me don't that's, have lifestyle statue replicas from Batman <laughs> Returns. Like, I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna walk it's in. Like, it's like video games. I'm gonna system. walk in and there's the anamorph of the uh, alien, just yeah, a giant. You yeah. have a predator. It's just I just you know most most of it fits into a few boxes. It's okay. not that crazy. I thought you were packing it up like you were packing up a comic book store. The DVDs take up more boxes than you think they're going to, but that's only because you can't. If you put it, if you filled large boxes, it would be almost nothing. But you can't fill a large box with that many Blu-rays and DVDs because it's too heavy, and then it'll break. And that's not fair to the, whoever's helping you move. Do you have VHSs? Very, very limited amount at this point. Uh, very that technology amount. is flimsy. I have a VCR hooked up to, to a, your TV to an upscaler. It goes to an upscaler. Can I ask you TV, a? Yeah. Uh, can I ask you? A, when's the last time you jerked off to VHS porn? college you so you don't have a couple no floating at your house no why in god's name would i i mean and i guess to a porn enthusiast i now sound like you do to me but no i uh porn's one thing that i do not need hard copies of nope no pun intended uh but no i don't need hard copies of porn i need i like listen my favorite thing to do in the world aside from complain is collect media okay which is what this whole podcast is based around yeah like i will have a section cut seg seg segmented off for me to complain yeah and then i will have my media stuff and then my food thing which is my third favorite thing uh i basically designed the podcast to be uh, the title meaning like this is what it's like to be friends with me like yeah. these are the things i if i had a one-sided friendship this is what it would be yeah <laughs> you're a fun you know what though like becoming your friend i knew which topics that's how friendships start. You learn which topics you share. Yeah. And you grow on those, and then you bump into other topics yeah. that you share in common. And I'll probably drink through the whole thing just to <laughs> just, just to tie it all together. I, are you going to put – I think you should put the complaining at the end when you've been I have, drinking. I have seg- – you want to hear the segments? Yeah, let it rip. Let's talk this about – This is a preview for Down with Joe DeRosa. Yeah, let's talk about the new show on the current show, Down with Joe DeRosa. Segments will – And then I'm going to be doing a recap show called is dan down with joe DeRosa in every episode cut it Pause. folks joe DeRosa here with your live dates update where am i going to be i'll tell you where i'm going to be december 8th 9th and 10th i'm going to be in st petersburg florida december 8th is we'll see you in hell live december 9th and 10th it's me doing i never promised you a rose garden my new show which by the way we are doing at the crane theater in new york city on December 14th. Come on out for that. I'm doing the show again in Austin, Texas, January 13th and 14th, then in Levittown at Governor's on the 20th and 21st, then again at the Crane Theater, January 25th in New York, New York. Get all tickets, showtimes, and information at joderosainfo.com. Come check me out. And if you're not getting enough of me on this podcast, swing on over to patreon.com slash WSYIH podcast, and you can sign up for the We'll See You in Hell pod where me and Patty Walsh talk about movies, Uh, reviews, commentary, all that stuff. And last but not least, of course, Joey Rose's seven days a week, opening at 1130 a.m. every day, booze and sandwiches from open till close. It's a party, people. It's a fun time. So many of you have come through. I am so touched at how many fans have come through to show love and support. It's amazing. It's been amazing. We've been open officially now for a year. We made it through the first year. It's it's incredible. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Come see us. All info about Joey Rose's plus ordering online. JoeyRosesNYC.com. But I'm down with Joe DeRosa. Hey. Segway. So these are the these are the segments. Uh D views, reviews of media, toys, and other fun things I buy. Okay. Delish. Okay. Food discussion and reviews. Great. D pad, all video game stuff. All right. And then D Day. What's on my mind today? Storm those beach, dude. Yeah. Storm the, the beach is a thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll all be spelled like D E. I love it. I, I didn't even notice it till now. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I think that's cool, right? Sure. Is that stupid? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna look. <laughs> you can but tell me if it. you think it's stupid. I don't care. No, I like I like uh alliterations, but I also like um that's not alliteration. Yeah, I just realized that. No, it's play on words. You know when you realize like you a D pad on the video game. Yeah, 
And then so it's spelled. I, I didn't know you were gonna do D E like De Rosa. Yeah, because it's kind of funny and stupid. I'll be yeah. like, stop for D pad. Do it. I don't care. It's yeah. your podcast. You do whatever the. Yeah, want, but dude. I'm asking you. Do you think this is a stupid idea? Because you're not. Re- you're reacting in a way that I know you well enough to think you don't like the the names. I don't like calling it D pad. <laughs> no, I don't. Why? D Lish bugged. <laughs> out of me there's some, the way you said delish just in my back i was like oh yeah okay so i shouldn't do the names of the segments i love the segments i think the segments are perfect i'm doing the names of the segments then don't do the names why i don't it's know it's funny it is funny it's dildoey yes and funny pip what do you think of the names of these segments for my podcast uh and Keep in mind, they're all going to spell. They're all spelled D E, and then the second syllable. Okay. So D views, where I review media and toys that I buy. D lish, where I talk about food. <laughs> D pad, where I talk about video games, and D day, what's on my mind today. D day is uh, it's very cringe, but I like it. We need animations on the bottom of your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got to add the uh, yeah, yeah. But it's cringy, but it's funny. It's great. I love it. All right. Also, you should tell him how uh, Al Jackson described your apartment. That's my favorite. I'll describe Al Jackson described <laughs> my apartment as it looked like I had a 15 year old son that died, and we didn't <laughs> we didn't change anything. Yeah, I, love Al. I love Al. That's perfect. See what I mean? Thanks, this is buddy. a black coffee. Yeah. What do you no? What do you mean? I usually get cream. And half and half. By so the way, she only had 1%, and she said she was very busy making sandwiches. So, competition. Yeah. They make sandwiches over there. God bless these people. They're not, we're not, we don't compete. We do two different no, things. No, they comped all our coffee. They're wonderful people over there. Oh, the old nice. Black Cat Coffee Shop. Go see them when you're in New York. But don't get coffee if you like having well, uh, half and half or milk in it. Yeah. In any case. Because that's, you're going to watch that just sit there and melt. You're not going to drink it? I don't like black coffee. What happened to your cream? I, t- I tuned out on all that, dude. Yeah. I'm sorry. This, yeah, I missed you know, everything. All right. I'll Listen, take a sip, but this is I got cola. Cringe, I got cringe segments on my uh, podcast. Do you want me to get milk? I'll go to get a little milk. Uh, It's fine. Dude, we're fine. We're already locked in. Pimp will go we're get in. you a little milk. I'll Guys, little I could have got a Dunkin' 25 minutes ago. Fuck. I'm fine. I mean, the Fuck. fact that you live in New York City. And like Dunkin' Donuts. I love Dunkin' Donuts. But the fact that you rest on Dunkin' Donuts for your coffee. Because it's consistent. Because I can get two cream, I can I can order two creams and a medium coffee, and it comes out exactly the way I like it. I got to go to some coffee shop named after a Central American revolutionary, and they have one percent milk. And I got to sit there and drink some weird form of jicama in you're, my you're shit. You're the problem with America. Dude. No, I'm not. I'm consistency. Something America needs to get back to. You're the problem with America, dude. No, consist- yeah. I'm con- I yeah. am America. Well, excuse me. Maybe I do order my lunch meat on Amazon because it comes <laughs> the way I like it. <laughs> comes salted and wet <laughs> the way I like it. Son of a bitch. All right. All but right. You know when you go to your friend's house and you're like, ah, I don't really, and the mom's like, no, nah, try it. And you're like, I don't like that. I'm just telling you I don't like it like that. And then they're like, I eat it. And you're like, well, now we're in a situation. I mean, you're a man of, uh, of I don't mean this insultingly, but of simple taste. Very simple tastes. But easy. It's also, you know what? A nice way to put that? Easy to please. Well, I don't think you are. I, I, think, I, oh, I, just, I said that out loud. Two things I've said out loud that I've immediately regretted. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I, yeah, Fuck. I think you're probably a real pain in the ass at dinner time. I won't eat that. I don't like no, that. No, this no, is no, too no. fancy. No, no, no. Eating, eating I, I don't have a problem. Coffee, I just don't like black coffee. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't you don't like to drink the bottom of an ashtray. Yeah, <laughs> why Makes not? Me miss cigarettes. I don't get it. Yeah, and so when it's like you know this, she's like one percent. I mean, yeah, dude. You don't look like, like a, you don't like drink soda that tastes like celery. <laughs> <laughs> why not, man? I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> I don't want grown up soda. It's like soda with a job. Mm. I don't want. I don't like it. Yeah. So, um, but food wise, I'm 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 pretty actually. That's the third thing I've said that immediately I'm like, maybe I'm wrong about that, too. Wait, well, I mean, so you, you'll, you'll, I mean, I find it fascinating that you're claiming that you'll go fancier because, and we're not getting to the battle yet, but when I said to you, send me a few foods you love, the first food you wrote was casseroles. Love them. Which, dear Lord. Love them. 
Today's battle is casserole versus salads. I am on the team of salads. Now, we did soup versus salad on the show before, but that was soup versus salad. Like, like, like appetizer green salad like oh, you know yeah, le- yeah. Le- leafy salad so you're not counting any leafy salads in this battle uh i do actually think they could but i d- also don't mind regulating it to salad types like 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 potato macaroni tuna <laughs> egg salad you know blah 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 all still uh, but basically what we're talking about is a ca- is a hot mush versus a cold mush yeah and we'll get to it later and I mean, there's yeah. But the fact that you led with casseroles, which nine times out of ten come out of a box that has some sort of character on it, you know why? Because wild. All, because yeah. <laughs> wild. Because I like animated. I like animated representation of my food. Yeah. I need to know a glove with eyes made what I'm about to eat. <laughs> Fair enough. I need to know a fucking. Uh, we we're, were on the bonfire. We had DJ Lou. He made a casserole, and everyone was disgusted. And I realized. I remember that it was the worst. I was on that day. I really, oh, no, I was on the day after because yeah. you weren't there, and I filled in. And it was. Can you do you remember what was it? It was the most disgusting a, thing I'd ever heard of in my it was life. Like a tuna ca- it was a tuna casserole with Whoa. cream of mushroom. Uh, what else did it have in it? Um, did it have like, oregano? <laughs> that's right, just, just oregano. And then it had uh, fifteen pieces of Kraft singles melted on top. Uh, so. There was something else though too. I don't delicious. There was like a. Did you like it? Yeah. Ugh. I ate it. Here's the thing. I liked it briefly. I turned pretty quick because after like three bites of not being hungry, you're like, I don't like this. That's so disgusting, dude. Wasn't there a fourth ingredient like salsa or something like that? There was something else in there. It was cream of mushroom soup. That was the that was the glop. Tuna. Oregano. Uh, and then... Macro- it was on shells. And then craft... Oh, they- all right. Yeah, you're leaving out. <laughs> it shells. God damn, dude. It was, it was great. That is disgusting. I got to do a shout out real quick. Simple we- man. Before we press on here. I'm going to have a sip of this fucking cigar butt. Uh, all right. Shout outs to... Uh, so people at the show's... Uh, people at my stand-up shows have been bringing me Happy Meal toys and actual Happy Meals. That's pretty cool. Because did we you, talked about McDonald's Daddy? so much on here. Huh? I love McDonald's. Did the fan contact you who actually runs the Happy Meal toys? He was going to send me all the toys for you. What? No. Yeah. What? By the way, yeah. Some if guy did, from McDonald's hit me up. He runs the Happy Meal toys? He's like in charge of merchandise for the... Yeah. Please. You want some Happy... You really want Happy Meal toys? Yes. Like okay. Your yes. apartment's pretty filled. It doesn't matter. It's it's like <laughs> this is like a cool thing that fans are starting to do, where they're showing up, bringing me Happy Meal toys. <laughs> it's very cool. So the other night at the stand, you're gonna get put on a list, dude. Asher Daverna, Aiden Daverna, James Anderson, and Evan Powers. Shout out, guys. Uh, thank you. They brought me an actual Happy Meal that had Pokemon cards in it, and uh, two other people whose names I don't know, and I apologize. I should have written them down, and I didn't. I'm sorry. But shout-outs to both of you. You know who you are. One woman brought me a Thor Happy Meal toy in uh, San Francisco. Cool. Very cool. She was the one that started. She was the catalyst. Yeah. Send Pimp your name if if you could, please. And also, the this other person, she came... Another woman came to my show in AC. Please send Pimp your name. She brought me... One of the nuggets, pimp. One of the nugget action figures that we looked up, and I, that's worth We're money from the eighties. Yeah, where they would like transform into this one was no this no one of the like McNuggets with the, the cowboy hat. Oh and, like, shit! Holster. I remember those. Yeah, and I I said to her, I go, don't give this to me. It's worth money, and she goes, I know. I want you to have it because you'll actually display it in your house, and I did. <laughs> where is it in the house? I have like trinkets. It's the in... center of his front door. <laughs> yeah. It, some people have you know it's, lions it's heads. My... <laughs> It's my Marley Knocker. <laughs> yeah, your Marley Knocker is a chicken McNugget toy from a Happy Meal. That's what's got the knocker on it when you knock Joe's door. Kong, Kong, come in. No, I have a, uh, I have like just action figures and stuff scattered throughout my apartment in different places. So I just have it in a place. But um, dude, it, but yeah. it's so cool. And then another woman brought me 
I can't remember if it's Happy Meal toy or not, but it's a little red. I think it is. It's a red thing that you squeeze and the eyes pop out. So anyway, any of you watching, send your names to Pimp, please. I want to give you proper shout outs. But this cool trend is happening where people are, again, we didn't request this or anything. People of their own fruition, fans, are showing yeah. up at shows with Happy Meal items and That's toys. Awesome. That is and really awesome. very, very cool. My, yeah, fan, yeah, my yeah. fans do this thing where they hand me pieces of paper and it's their social security number and I just go steal their identity. Yeah, yeah. No, my other fans are doing something cool where they just give me cash. It's very <laughs> cool. They, give, they bring a knot of cash. <laughs> they give it to me. We They kiss me on both. I like to do a little mafia greeting. They give me a kiss on both cheeks. <laughs> they hand me money. Dude, if you start just getting manila envelopes. <laughs> if you're like, the uh, Also, shout out to the Baloney Boys. Uh, who are a punk band out of... They're off the West Coast, I think. I think out of San Fran, I remember. Anyway, they sent me their EP. Uh, it's awesome. Check it out. It's on um, you know, iTunes and all that. I mean, Apple Music and all that stuff. Now, and that Spotify. is an alliteration. Yeah, that really? is. But Baloney Boys, very fun punk. If, if you like the Black Flag stuff in the vein of TV Party, you'll really like these guys. They're great. And... They suggested you should do a bologna battle at some point, which we're going to do, just not today. We talked about maybe doing, but we both love bologna. Love bologna. Um, one one I thought of doing with you was bologna versus hot dogs, but it's I tough. I love both. I do too. Uh, it's tough. But, Man, but I, used I, to, think, I used to take bologna slices and put a little, ran like a line of ranch, and then roll it up. That's disgusting. Cowboy dude. taco, dude. Damn, that's disgusting. Oh, that's disgusting. That's disgusting, Dan. Disgustingly delicious. Folks, what are your favorite holiday meals? What are your favorite holiday activities? What are your favorite holiday traditions? I'll tell you some of mine. Cooking the food, eating the food, thinking about the food. What food? Meat-based food. Butcher Box. You know where this is going. Butcher Box is taking all the guesswork out of finding high quality meat and seafood you can trust, especially great and handy during this holiday season. You want to prep those meals. You want to prep those meals for the people that you love. Uh, or maybe you want to prep some meals for some strangers. Maybe you want to do a little charity. Maybe you just want to cook for yourself. I don't know. The point is, is if you're going to cook and if you're going to cook meat, you want quality involved in that process and you want that quality to not cost you an arm and a leg you want it to not be inconvenient and you want it to basically come to your doorstep and that's why butcher box is doing all the right stuff in a great way you're going to enjoy a high high range of high quality cuts that are just hard to come by at the grocery store at an amazing value like this uh, exclusive member deals are there so you can save big on your favorite cuts uh, there's recipe inspiration guides tips hacks some are even personalized uh, so you can cook up all the the fun meals that you want to cook up um, i love steak personally and i actually think red meat gets sidelined a lot at how uh, during the holidays and i think butcher box helps you bring high quality steak into the mix and allows you to cook and add some red meat to the holiday spread. And and trust me, people love it. People love it. You, if, you, if you suggest it beforehand, people are, are hesitant. You set it out on that table, it goes, baby. It goes. I'm telling you. Anyway, uh, also, by the way, gift butcher box to somebody. It's a great gift at Christmas time for, for the person who has everything, uh, as they say. Anyway, the holiday season is made better. It's made tastier. With ButcherBox, for a limited time, they're offering our listeners ground beef for life and 10% off your first order. That's ground beef for life plus 10% off your first order. You sign up today at ButcherBox.com slash TasteBuds. Use that promo code TasteBuds. Get 10% off your first box and ground beef for life during your membership. That's ButcherBox. That's butcherbox.com slash taste buds and use that promo code taste buds to claim this deal. Folks, this episode of taste buds is sponsored by better help. That's better help help H E L P. You heard me. You need it. We all need it. It's hard to find. Sometimes it's hard to find the motivation to get the help you need. I love better help. I use better help. Uh, life does not come with a user manual people. So when it's not working for you, it's very easy to feel stuck. 
Think about how stuck you feel when you do have a user manual for something and that thing is not working. Life doesn't have that. So the, the feeling of stuckness, if you will, can be quite overwhelming. Better help is offering you the help you need. Therapists that are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learning, helping you learn the, to, to, to get those productive coping skills. Uh, and that makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine that you call you. That's as close as you're going to get. BetterHelp is offering you the closest thing to the user manual. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient. It's accessible anywhere, 100% online. I'm telling you, I use it. Uh, meet my therapist. Uh, we, we do, as of now, we do the video meets. But we have the option of always switching to phone if we want you can you can you can check in through text and things like that. Uh, it's very accommodating and by it's affordable. The price of it is it is priced as the more affordable therapy sessions are priced even through insurance a lot of the time. Now, it is true that sometimes your insurance could cover all costs. I will tell you. People have a lot of problems with that, unfortunately. It's the way the system works, unfortunately. I have had many problems with that, unfortunately. And by problems, I mean calling uh, um, uh, facilities and not getting calls back, calling people and they, they don't have room for new clients, whatever. You're offered a very limited selection. You're offered a very limited amount of resources for for what you need and, and something you need in a time-sensitive manner. BetterHelp is here to help you get around all of that, to make it an affordable thing when you step outside of the system. You step outside of the system, usually you're finding people charging you hundreds of dollars an hour. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And so is life. And that's why BetterHelp is amazing. The, 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 here's the thing as the world's largest therapy service, better help has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed therapists. As I said, these people are vetted and available hundred percent online. Okay. And here's all you gotta do. You fill out a brief questionnaire and then you get matched with a therapist. That's it. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. That's also tough. Sometimes when you're, you know, they make it easy to do that. This couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, nothing. This is it. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash taste buds. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash taste buds. Get 10% off your first month. Sorry. Business. So, you rolling bologna up with ranch dressing in the middle. I mean, my God almighty. Talk about a Russian doll of garbage. <laughs> did, did you ever see that movie, The. The Watch with Vince Vaughn? No. That was it's, right after George Floyd, remember? Or not George Floyd, uh, Tavon. Uh, yeah. With, uh, Trayvon Martin. Yeah, and George Zimmer, Zimmer, George yeah, Zimmerman. Yeah. And they, I mean, that happened like the week before. They had of the to movie. change the name from Neighborhood Watch to The Watch. Yeah. I believe. I think that's movie. Isn't trigger. that crazy that yeah. movies happen like that where they're like, yeah. We got this crazy high school story of these two out, outside boys <laughs> who want to change the way the high school is. Columbine, we can't release that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they, well, they were watch their fighting aliens, so it's like Ghostbusters, but or the watch aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Are they legal? <laughs> what does that represent, Joseph? But there's a scene in Ben Stiller's house where Vince Vaughn finds Russian dolls. And he's <laughs> like opening them, and he goes, he goes, "Oh my God, look at that! Look at that! There's another one inside. <laughs> hold on, hold on, wait a minute." There's another one. There's another one. He, he literally doesn't understand. How he's never seen one. Yeah, and he just keeps doing it. And he and Ben Stiller's like, "Okay, please, uh, just put that down." And he's like, "He's like, I'm halfway in, buddy. I got to see how far it goes." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, oh my god! Oh yeah. my!" And he's so blown away by it. It's a, it's really funny. Crazy thing about Vince Vaughn is he can get to that point where he still has his fastball when he just reacts to stuff. He's so funny still. Yeah. Did you see um? Watch that movie, um, Creepy. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to Creepy? 99 Rounds, or what's it called? I just looked up films that were impacted by 9-11 happening. Uh, Tom Hanks, on the week of 9-11, decided to officially end the sequel to Forrest Gump because yeah. it felt meaningless. No, but did you know in the sequel to Forrest Gump, 
there was a scene where you saw the towers go down behind No, him? shut the f*** up. Yeah, yeah. What? Wait, how do you know that? You can read the synopsis of Forrest Gump Part 2 on the internet. I was friends with a couple of hijackers, and they didn't <laughs> tell me what they was going to do. Yeah, there's like, a, like, when you read it, it's fucking... Forrest Gump is a dog shit movie. Oh. We all got swept away in the moment. Let's get into this. Except for one man. One man was not swept away. Your, your His simple, name was DeRosa. Your simple brain magic won't work on Joe DeRosa. I saw through it. Can't hypnotize me. Your mom f- gets you into school. It's gross. <laughs> that movie stinks ass. And the technology didn't hold up well. Yeah. It now looks like... Uh, who was the guy that? Do you did, think? Do you think? Who in was the, the guy? Wait, wait, wait. Who was the guy? Steve Oderkirk, the guy that did the thumbs that talked. Oh all yeah. Those movies. That's what that. That's what those scenes look like. Now. I haven't watched it. It looks like upside down mouth on John F. Kennedy. Like <laughs> hi, far. Or it's no, like, it looks it's like crazy. The, the Conan mouths. When yes. They, when they used yeah, to do that. Th- that's Steve Oderkirk. Yeah. That's that's yeah. We're like I don't yeah, know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you think in the sequel it was Forrest that gave? You know how like when Forrest gives all the ideas to like shit happens or whatever. Do you think there was a part where he was, there was just uh, like an Al-Qaeda member and he's like, but the United States is so strong. He's like, I would just take out a couple of their buildings. <laughs> Dude. You know, the <laughs> World, World Trade Center is also a financial capital. Dude, Dan, when you read the synopsis, I'm, which is read readily it. available, it's not that far off from that. Really? Like, when you, it, like, there are, there are full articles online about like, so the Forrest Gump two uh, synopsis has leaked, and it is insane. Like, because like they, it's crazy. Like one of the things literally was like he's on the bench, and the you see the towers like drop behind him or Jesus something. It was something Christ. crazy like that. It was cr- it was crazy. Like, but that movie when you go back and watch it, is bad shit. Yeah, it's bad shit. You got fucking Sinise. Crawling around on the ground with no yeah. legs. Also, Forrest <laughs> talking Gump, about shrimp. It's wild. Forrest <laughs> Gump really does treat Lieutenant Dan. Just comes in and wrecks this guy's life. This guy's a military man through and through. Yeah. Generationally. And son of a bitch, dude. I love the actor that plays Bubba. Yeah. I love that actor. You can't unsee Bubba once you see Forrest Gump. Yeah. Like, once you see that movie. Like, he's in Heat, and he's awesome oh, yeah. in Heat. He's the guy that... Yeah, the one last. He's the guy in the that works in the. Oh no, he's a cop. He's a cop. He's yeah. Pacino's partner. Yeah. He's the one that doesn't get killed, and he's like a badass. But like half halfway through it, yeah, you see him making that face. I gotta about talk shrimp. about shrimp <laughs> instead of finding out where the hell this heist is going. I'm reading Heat Two right now. Michael Mann and, and, and another author wrote a sequel to Heat. It's called Wango's Revenge. It just came out. It's about all. It's about. Vincent Hanna, who's Pacino's character, hunting down Val Kilmer's character after he drives away at the end. And then there's a prequel heist with De Niro and his crew. And it jumps back and forth. And it is awesome. <laughs> okay. And like, dude, like you're reading it. Like you're reading it, reading it. Yeah. And like it finally gets to the part where like Pacino like sp- like springs into action is like on the scene. And it's written, ex- it's it's exactly what you want. Like, really? he's interrogating um, John Voight's character at yeah. one point. And he's like, he's like, you know, and he's like, so-and-so, does that ring a bell? And uh, John Voight's like, ring a bell? And he's like, bell, bell, ding, ding, motherfucker. Like, and he's, yeah. doing, he's doing all the Pacino talk from it. the movie. And you're like, it, it's so fun to read in the voices. Because that was Pacino right before he completely let, completely loose. Oh, it's wild. He was still a little... Of you know, like, he's popping. He's popping speed in the book too, which uh, which explains why he acts the way he does in the movie. Which they had to write afterwards because they're yeah. like, we got to make an excuse for this. <laughs> this is fucking bonkers. No, but was, like, did, w- w- go ahead. There was one other movie impacted by. The oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Pim. Uh, Jackie Chan was supposed to start filming a movie called Nosebleed, which was about a window washer on the World Trade Center who foils a terrorist <laughs> plot. <laughs> Jesus. Was it a kung fu movie or is yeah. it like one of no. his comedies? No, it was a debate movie. <laughs> he makes comedies with like little kids and shit. Yeah, but he does kung fu in all of them. Uh, well, yeah, but you know what I mean. You, you're not getting a movie with Jackie Chan where he's not kicking something. Was this a Frankie Muniz type vehicle or was this more of a he's Bronx ca- Rumble in the Bronx is yeah. what I'm asking. It feels like a Die Hard from what I'm Yeah, reading. okay. It's absolutely a Die Hard thing, which really uh, bugged me because the, the anniversary of Die Hard, like the 30th anniversary or whatever came out. 
Uh huh. Maybe even the 35th. And Bruce Willis posted a picture on Instagram on top of the tower. And he was like, can't believe I'm back here. I was like, yeah, you're not John McClane. You didn't have to jump off of that tower. You were on a movie set and it was all taken care of. Everything was okay. It's weird to be like, here I am again where it all went down. You didn't go through that. You acted like you How went through you? that. How dare you? How dare you? He went through it. He said, come to set. Have a cup of coffee. You, you don't play a role like that unless you're living yeah, it, dude. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, can he not go to the airport in Detroit or whatever the fuck it went down in the second one? Die, I remember I remember we saw Die Hard 2. We were about 11 when Die Hard 2 came out. Maybe yeah. 12. And we went to see it. And my friend Scott, who to this day is one of my closest. You met Scott. Yeah. We went to his house. Scott oldest, rules. One of my oldest, my best, oldest best friend. Anyway. And he goes, come on, dude. Two Christmases in a row. And it was That's like funny. such a weird thing yeah. for a 12-year-old to understand. Yeah, really and I was like. What, what a cynical 12-year-old. Yeah, and I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Shut up. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, I, I, I couldn't handle it at Look the time. Look at that. You can tell it's not even raining in the background. Look. <laughs> you see where the rain ends right there. You're like, you're 12. <laughs> you're seven years old. He's going. He was, and I'm not Seven joking. years old, they go, Scott, you excited for Christmas? And he goes. Santa's going to every house. <laughs> yeah. Every house in the By the way, I'm not joking. He was managing our local Radio Shack at 17. Yeah. Don't be surprised. Not surprised. <laughs> he had surprised. grown men working yeah. under him. I was like, what is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> yeah, when you're, when you're 12 and you're popping holes in fucking theories and shit <laughs> into plots. Come on. Anyway. Two Christmases. All right. Folks, let's get to the battle. Pimp, we got to be... Right, we're yeah. we're good here. All right, let's go. That's when I told those two kids, if you don't like the people in your high school, you should just do something about it. Oh, no. <laughs> Guns are very easy to get. Yeah. <laughs> trench coats are nice. I like a trench coat. It makes you look like an angel of death. <laughs> just, just, he's just behind all the terrible shit. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. <laughs> That's Forrest Gump, but evil shit. Dark, yeah, dark Forrest Gump. Yeah, so if you don't like your little beautiful daughter, you should do something about it, <laughs> Mr. Benet, Mr. Ramsey. I don't know. <laughs> it's just all these fucked up disappearances. That's shit. a great web series, Dark Forrest Gump. Dark Forrest, just yeah. inspiring people to do the yeah, most yeah, evil yeah. shit. Get that animated. Get that cease and desist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny, dude. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. I don't That's know. Crazy. Maybe go into Iraq and take down a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry. All right. Why are you sorry? What are you sorry for? Having fun? You're sorry, sorry, for sorry a, I'm having a, such a good time. Bringing joy to the fucking world? <laughs> yeah. I need it in my life, dude. <laughs> I'm sitting here walking a tightrope between a podcast and running a bar. I know, dude. I don't know if I'm coming or going right now. I don't know which Joe I get. I don't know if I get fucking businessman Joe or my pal Joe. DeRosa, who knows All I delicious. Wish... And can you call the end of your podcast Defrag? I and wish... that's where you just let it all out. I wish I knew what Joe I got every morning. Yeah, don't we all, bro? <laughs> don't we all? I don't... all I no one is... told me when you get to your late thirties you just wake up scared. Oh, welcome to the shit, dude. <laughs> welcome to the show, baby. Yeah, wait till you hit 45, bitch. <laughs> you don't even know what downhill is, dude. Dude, I love going downhill. I've been doing a joke about that recently on stage <laughs> where people are like, oh, it's all downhill from here. And I'm like, good. I love going downhill. <laughs> dude, you have no idea, dude. You're, you're gonna I'm ready. You're going to start picking up speed soon, dude. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, getting older is like... It's like when you have that panic attack on weed. Yeah. And you go, I can handle it. I can handle it. You go, oh, my God, it's getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then you're like, it can't get worse than this. You're like, yes, it it's, can. It's, it's, it's the perfect description. <laughs> and it just keeps going. You're like, come I tell on. You, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> the same panic I used to get at like 17 when I was smoking too much weed is every morning for me now. You just wake up in that state. Well, and that's that's this. And we'll get to the battle. Relax. We're getting to it, I swear, fans. Uh, the That's the saddest part about getting older, is you start to realize you're, as Burt Kreischer calls it, treat, whatever your treat is. Yeah. Mine's whiskey. Yours is weed. Yeah. Is not only soothing that panic, but creating it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, crazy. So you're it's... like, you're... 
You're in a cycle. I eat. I eat because I'm unhappy, and, I and I'm unhappy because I eat. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's you're in it, dude. Oh. You're 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 on the you're 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 Griswold right now yeah. in London, dude. I can't get left. It's incredible. <laughs> That's it. We're all in that right now, dude. I feel it, and it's not stopping. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> I feel it. The wheels are moving. Now another sip of black coffee. I'm a different person now. Uh. That stuff's going to taste like candy to you uh, in two months. I go, I go, I'm solving all the cases. <laughs> yeah, dude, give it some time, dude. Drink a pot of that every morning. I just wake up and I go, you know what I don't like? Unions that are too nosy. <laughs> the Stefano called me once on a 98-degree day. And he goes, what are you doing today? I go, nothing. It's too hot. And he goes, what are you doing a day like today? You just sit inside, drink coffee, and think? <laughs> <laughs> I go, that's exactly what I'm doing, and it's not good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sips of hot coffee. Uh, whole pot every morning, baby. That's crazy. Huh? That's crazy. It's a small pot. Okay. It's a mini pot, but All it's right. still a pot. It's still three solid cups, dude. Yeah. In your journal, yeah. when they find it among your collections, uh-huh. when you get when you get wrongfully accused of being a serial killer when you die <laughs> and they come and take your body out, they go, I miss my we, trinkets. Yeah, we got to <laughs> dig through this, dude. That's what they're going to call the documentary. Trinkets, Trin- Colin. The, the, the Joe- children <laughs> yeah. the story. But it's it's also it's or uh, yeah it's also got to be the girl that disappeared that you got blamed for. <laughs> Where it's like the Allison Daly uh, case, dude. Um, and here's the craziest part about my f- three to four cups of black coffee every morning. I'm drinking coffee like a foreman out of a mug of a four year old. <laughs> yeah, so it's I, a fucking Yoda head. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I got the Smurfs on it. Yeah. I'm pounding it back. Yeah. You do it through a st- fucking curly straw? Yeah. You're like, mmm. Display, display, display. New sponsor, display. New sponsor alert. It's display. One of a kind metal posters designed to capture your unique passions and interests. Display created a 21st century canvas that's sturdy, magnet mounted, and durable enough to withstand a lifetime of, of intense staring. Uh, but look, Staring is only half the fun. You can customize, collect, and rearrange them at will. It's very cool. They're metal posters. They're, they have magnetic mounts, so you can set the mounts, and you can take the poster down and put up a different poster. Easy peasy. I'm a person that rearranges his uh, living space frequently. Uh, I'll decide one day that I hate everything, and you move it all around, and I do have a lot of stuff on my walls. Uh, some of it is mounted with just, you know, sticky tape stuff and then other things are nailed and hung and whatever Uh, and i can tell you anytime you move any of that it sucks because now there's holes or there's residue or whatever and you know all because what because you wanted to have a different thing hanging in that place than what you had hanging there and that's what display is allowing you to do you go all right i'm moving everything around i want a different piece of art there pop that off pop something new on boom you're out the door Uh, They have branded and artistic artwork. They have over a million designs available to everyone. Uh, Stuff from Marvel, DC, Star Wars, uh, Netflix, NASA, South Park, plenty of games, plenty of movies. Everybody can find something for yourself. Uh, You know, I like they have a they have a vintage and a retro section, which I like a lot, like old movie posters and things that are inspired by old movie posters and stuff like that. And I thought that that was really, really cool. Display, they deliver the products worldwide, 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 in only four to five business days. It's a perfect alternative for standard paper posters that often get damaged. I didn't mention that. Sometimes when you move something, it gets damaged. This won't happen. And again, no marks on the wall. Eco-friendly. Every design sold. uh, Oh, how about this? Every design that is sold, they are going to plant one tree. That's nice. Right now, this place is having the big this oh god, I can't talk. Right now, this plate is having the biggest discount ever for buying one to two designs. You get 35% off for buying three to four designs. You get 39% off. If you buy five or more, you're gonna get 44% off. Jesus, that's almost half off. Use the link in the description. The discount is applied automatically at checkout. Go to displate.com slash taste buds. That's D-I-S-P-L-A-T-E dot com slash taste buds and use code taste buds at checkout. Displate, collect your passions. Folks, let's talk daily fantasy. Let's talk making entries. Let's talk player projections. 
What am I talking? We're, we're talking about prize picks. That's what we're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. All right. How do you do it? It's easy. You go to the prize picks app. You 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 want to do some of your daily fantasy sports thing on there. You you make your entries as simply as possible. They're helping you out with pre- player projections, uh, and you win. You win. If you win, you win, and it's e- and it's easy to to capitalize on if you win. Uh, hopefully, you win. Uh, they give me an example to read to you because they know how inept I am with sports information. Um, and I am, but I always say this: this aspect of sports I enjoy very much. I just wish I knew more, so I was better at it. And Prize Picks actually helps me, a guy like me, with that. So you say tonight, I'm picking, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes to throw for more than 320 passing yards. Derrick Henry to rush for less than 85 yards. Cooper Cup, which is my favorite name ever for an athlete, to score more than half, 0.5 touchdowns. And Tyreek Hill to catch less than 3.5 passes. You you get it how this works. You pick two to six players if they will. Uh, if they're going to go score more or less than the prize picks projection, which prize picks is uh, supplying you and you can win up to 25 times your money or, or entry uh, on an entry, excuse me, up to 25 times your money on an entry. I mean, I think that's great. You're not competing against other people, which I like just you versus projections. I, I like this. It's fun. Prize picks offers projections on any sport you want to watch. That's the other thing I like They're yeah, we're talking NFL, NBA, NLB, uh, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, uh, soccer, WNBA, eSport, NASCAR, cricket, for God's sakes. It goes on and on. So even a guy like me can find something that he sort of understands. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. I also like that because I'm impatient. And and you got safe and fast withdrawals. How awesome is that? Operational right now in 30 states and over 30 states, actually, and in Canada. You're going to download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com. You can sign up today and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit to match up to $100 when you use the promo code TasteBuds. So that means if you deposit $100 uh, or less, Price picks will give you a hundred dollars or less. It will match whatever you put in up to a cap of a hundred dollars. If you deposit 50 price picks will give you, 50. you get it. Anyway, don't forget you enter the promo code taste buds at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to a hundred dollars prize picks. <laughs> and I have a little balcony. I have a little terrace in my apartment Dude, so I can walk out onto it. Like like Pacino and Heat, like taking it. Looking the over days. the city, yeah. <laughs> dude, I love it. I'm sorry that I was out making sandwiches. <laughs> Woo! That, I'm sorry that the Happy Meal toys got dried out. It's heavy, dude. You got no idea, yeah, bro. I love it. I got a baby in a microwave, dude. I um, th- what are your shits like? A potato gun? Usually pretty good. If I'm eating, if I eat right, good. No, because because the caffeine helps. It like you know. Yeah, it's funk. And it's look, it's all what your body can handle. Like I, caffeine, I don't process caffeine in a bad way. It doesn't get me jittery. It doesn't keep me awake. I could literally drink coffee before I went to bed, and I could still go to bed. I could, I, I've had a coffee and took a nap. Yeah, so it doesn't, like, rock my system. It's more ritualistic in the morning. It gets me, like, starting yeah. a routine of fluids for the day. And sure. it, and, and it's, it wakes me up. It's warm and I whatever. love it. It's my, it's, as a pothead, I, I find it necessary. Yeah, you it's know. It's a balancing act. Uh, when I was smoking Stooges... Oh, I a mean, nice cigarettes ziggy? and coffee. Oh, my God. oh, dude, forget it. I used to forget go. It. I had for five years when I was still drinking and smoking, I had the same morning routine. Every, I would wake up. I would go down the street to Dunkin' Donuts. I'd get a medium coffee. And then I would smoke a cigarette on the way home. <sighs> By the time I got home and put that cigarette out, I was ready to poop, go poop, come back out, have another cigarette with the coffee. I'm getting shaky just thinking about it. Because I remember doing that and like... You would get that empty stomach feeling, and you you'd get like a little like, "Whew! All right, let me sit down for a second. That's one of the reasons I stopped smoking. But um, but anyway, our battle today was not coffee. It's not cigarettes. It's not any of those things. It's casseroles versus salads. 
And I will open this argument up by saying, Dan, I don't know who you think you are to come on this show the first time ever and try to step in the ring with me <laughs> against potato salad, tuna salad, egg salad, macaroni salad, pasta salad, coleslaw. Dog, what are you even thinking? And we're not even getting into the variations of each. All, we're just talking straight across the board. All I hear is germs, sickness, all those things you're dealing with. Expound. Let them, let them stay out too long. And what happens? Well, what kind of animals leaving them out? Everyone. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. No one properly takes care of a salad, a potato salad. A macaroni salad. You you're go to nuts. a barbecue, that thing's been outside for three hours. Right. So you're getting it's got a shelf spoiled life. mayonnaise. It's got a there. shelf life. It does. It's got a quick shelf life. That's it's got all right. a very quick shelf Most life. Most good things do. No, it's not. It's a hot stripper. Most pleasures it's are fleeting. It's a hot stripper. It's heading right to disaster. <laughs> and you know that. Sure. Things are beautiful now in the black light while right. she's got those fake eyelashes on. But right. in the morning, right. where are you going to be? Yeah. You know who's going to be there in the morning? A casserole. Casserole in the fridge, yeah. ready for a reheat. Yeah, a casserole. Something reheat. that looks like shit from the second it comes out of the oven. No. To the second of the, this is what I hate about a casserole. No matter how many people stick their foods and sporks in it, and no matter how eaten it is, it looks the same. It that is shift. disgusting, dude. It shift. That is it's disgusting. Got, it's got several life forms, no, dude. No, it can, no, you know that's what? gross, dude. You know when that's you see gross. it? You know how older gentlemen, when we get gray in our hair, and we start looking a little better? That's casserole the day Here's after. Here's the other reason I don't like a casserole. A person could eat directly out of the dish with their fork, and you wouldn't be able to tell. You can cover That's it up. Disgusting. I love dude. it. No, dude. Like, oh. I love a history you can mend. Like a fat man shoving a paper towel into the hole of a cake to dude. cover where he ate away. Well, it's That's better. what you can do with paper t- <laughs> with a casserole. It's, it's, it's better gross. than the cold chaos you're putting in front of me, where I'm going through a potato salad, a raisin comes out of nowhere. That's all this life or, is: is cold chaos. Or a. Or, I got news for you, buddy. No. Welcome to the real world, pal. No. I no. think you, if you think it's all tucked into a nice, clear dish that oh, your mom pulls out I'm, of the oven and ate. Oh, this macaroni salad is so delicious and zesty. Why are there peas in it? Uh, Why is just a random pea show? I won't. Up? I won't argue. I won't argue that. I, I'm not a big macaroni salad guy. And when it's got pea, I like pasta salad. I don't like macaroni salad because macaroni salad is mayonnaise. And especially if you're throwing peas and the carrot the cubes fuck, into uh, it, nothing's you? worse than a carrot cube. Yeah, I was just going to say carrot cube and peas showing but up. But you, you think you don't got peas running through? Yeah, you, you do, think you don't hot. got peas running through your goddamn uh, casseroles? All peas and carrots are welcome in a casserole. Bullshit. Guess what, dude? I'm sorry that I'm sorry that we have an open lifestyle in the Bullshit. casserole way. Oh, you want to bring your friend in? Bring your friend into your casserole. That's beef, dude. Let's beef. Let's, let's, beef. let's put beef in a casserole. Yeah. And it'll yeah. be delicious. Yeah. And here's why, Dan. Here's why. And it won't always be delicious. And you goddamn know it won't always it, be. If it's warm. But here's why we can put beef in a casserole. Here's why we could put beef in anything. Or I'm sorry. Here's why we could put anything in a casserole. Because there's no nuance. There's no craftsmanship. There's no skill. It's put whatever shit you pulled out of the fridge into a bowl. And as long as you dump salt. By the way, the dish is called ca- a casserole. That's how low rent this platter is they named it after the dish yeah. imagine if somebody gave you a bowl of soup and they go here this is called bowl. a bowl of soup <laughs> and they it's no. in the name too no they say here's some soup they don't go here's bowl oh the- <laughs> you don't go what is this and they go it's bowl i go all right <laughs> you go what's bowl and they go anything you put inside also, this don't because besmirch, it's garbage <laughs> don't besmirch casseroles everyone leads with the name of the casserole here is a tuna casserole nobody is this is what my mom said frequently growing casserole. up frequently growing up i'm gonna make a casserole for dinner and then you go what what in it yeah you gotta ask specifics Great. nobody ever said i'm gonna make a pot nobody it. ever said i'm gonna make and a I'm pan gonna, i'm gonna say one word that isn't casserole that is a casserole that's you're immediately gonna go with right lasagna lasagna is the only good one you got what lasagna and seven layer pizza dip those are the only two ones you got that's it. I'll give you a taco dip occasionally. The taco but people dip usually perfect. fuck those up. Seven layers. People usually guacamole, fuck up the cheese. Here's the thing about casseroles. People usually fuck up the taco dip by putting something I don't want in there. In casseroles, you got you got meat and melted cheese all the time. Those are the two hits. Yeah, I mean, that's the Keith and Mick what of every casserole. Moron can't put this together. Exactly. 
Exactly. I can't believe you think that's a plus. I love it. I love. You know what? If you I'm gonna get pull a, a bag, a half it's bag, consistency. You got a half bag of shredded cheese. Yes. All right. You you show me a half bag of shredded cheese, half a pound of bologna, and a box of noodles, and I'll show you a casserole. Great. It ain't let's nothing dance. to be proud about. And let's dance. Then you know what? Because then you can eat and you can work on the bigger problems. All right. Listen. If you want to not think, sure. Okay. But also. Putting a potato salad together is not rocket science, but it takes enough care that it's worth. Dude, you show up. Let me tell you something. And this is an argument we go to a lot on the show. You show up to a party yeah. with a bowl and they go, what's that? And you go, I made potato salad. People go, holy sh- No, wow. they go, oh, you're in a rush. No, they a don't. casserole, they go, they go, you took time to bake it? You took Dan, time to- Dan, no, no, they don't say that because I'll tell you what you Thank say. Thank you for bringing the entree. I know, I know, no, I know it. They don't say that, and I'll tell you why. You're I'll a- tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you show up in the casserole, the first thing you say is, "I need to use your oven," and you go, "You fucking rag." I got three ovens going full of shit. I don't have time for this right now. Listen, and you and your you and your side dish life. I'm over here living an entree existence. I'm you're, bringing an entree. Dude, if you're eating a casserole as an entree and then it's not thank lasagna. You for wor- then thank you for working so hard to make America great. If you, if, when if, you. If you want to be old fucking barbecue on a Tuesday, Joe. When you just got up, money to throw around on no, McDonald's no. toys. You show, <laughs> when you show up with potato salad, then they go, oh my God, would you put it in? And then you start to share your recipe. You go, why well, might do it? My mom had a recipe. We use a little sour cream and scallions or whatever it is. It's so exciting. It's so Dave, our head chef guy here, he, he one day comes in, he goes, he goes, I want to show you something. This is a pasta salad I made. He gave me a bite of this shit. I wanted to kiss him. Yeah. It was so good. And the craftsmanship that, and as I'm eating it, he's going, he's going, so this is what I did. I chopped up this. I put this. I put that. That, that thing you're tasting that you can't quite put your finger on. That's another thing you could always say with a salad. You know that? You know it. The thing you can't quite put your finger yeah. on, that's ginger or whatever. That's funny because the, the way you're... You can't ex- do that with a casserole. That, it sounds like you're explaining a casserole. No, me. no. Because I put this in, and then I put this little ingredient you might not get no. hints of. Here's what a casserole is. You know that thing you can't put your finger on? And I go, is it fingers? Because this looks like it has <laughs> fingers in it. This looks like you put fingers into a dish Listen, and cooked it. When you get a salad, when you get a cold salad, you got a limited time. From the second that fucking plastic comes off it and you put it outside you got limited time before you got to put it back in the refrigerator buddy you got limited time on the casserole too i got i got news for you casserole you can eat room temperature and it sucks nah, it's still it's still pretty good it sucks and i'll tell you this too aside from lasagna the only main course casserole that exists that's bullshit okay they're, all of them are main courses. no they're not they're, they're all side their own. dishes and dips and you know it and they're I'll not good dips. side dishes or good. They're good dips, but they're not good side it's dishes. It's entree or dips. That's it. No, they're side and, dishes, dude. And a dip is just an all day entree. If you if you put something, if you dare put something where the base ingredient is elbow macaroni in front of me, Love and it. it is not a side dish, I'll flip the table over. If it's elbow macaroni or tiny shells, get oh. ready. Oh my, my stomachs God. are about to be a beach covered in shells. God, the just picture, picture. Picture the pasta picnic. Ooh. Picture the family get together of the pastas, and then elbow macaroni shows love up, it. and you go, "Why do we have to have this trash in our family?" I love it. Lasagna's there. It's like Saint Germain's joke about Evan Williams yeah, showing up to the party yeah. with all the with all like Jack Jim, <laughs> uh, not Jim, um, 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 Johnny Walker and yeah. everybody. That's what elbow macaroni is. Love That's it. what every macaroni. Casseroles are the only thing where you can go. Don't you dare put that dollar seventy nine box of Barilla spaghetti into that casserole. You use the cheap shit. No, you use no. the elbow macaroni. By the way, dude, <laughs> casseroles can be as elegant as you want them to be. I've, Give me I, one. A great lasagna. <laughs> you got nothing after lasagna. You know it. You lasagna got is after lasagna, lasagna is my one. That was the one thing where I was like, got him. And then I didn't think of any backups. What's your favorite? Don't say lasagna. What's your favorite? Ca- like, what's a What's a give me I, a turkey tetrazzini? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Let me tell you how disgusting that is. It's delicious. Every Thanksgiving, 
Me and Keith Robinson used to call Mike Vecchione and trash him yeah. and say that you're not allowed to celebrate this day because you're Italian. And uh, we would then begin to make up Italian <laughs> Thanksgiving dishes <laughs> to mock him and his heritage. And in my be- on my best day, yeah. in all the years we did it, yeah. I couldn't have come up with turkey tetrazzini. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a My Blue Heaven joke. What the fuck, Soder? I love it. Turkey te- <laughs> What is in that? <laughs> Mushrooms, turkey, breadcrumbs. <laughs> oh, my God. Cream of mushroom soup. Oh my god, Bring it in, dude! Welcome. Hey, what kind you, of noodles? Tetris is Tetris you do, a noodle? You can do, no, you can do spaghetti. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> casseroles. The slug of a casserole should be. It looks the same coming up as it did going in. And I nothing read, changes. You know what I read from that? Consistency. And I think consistency is pretty cool. Also, it's the best winter food. Cold food. A casserole is a great cold weather you, food. You are you are out of your you're you're out of your mind. I'm sorry. Hold you're on. over here summering in the Hamptons with all your expensive potato salads. Uh, dude, that's I'm the, over here. Listen. I'm over here in a three story walk up with real working people Dog. having a corner slice of a casserole. You go. You go into any deli. You go into any burger shop. You go into a, any hot dog joint. Whatever. Like any basically like lunch variations of lunch foods and you get yourself a hoagie a club sandwich a burger a dog whatever it is and then you go what are your and then the waitress goes what do you want for your side and you go what are my options she goes fries you go that's a given yeah chips that's a given then she goes we also have potato or macaroni (laughs) salad you're like baby marry me I'm Here we gonna, go. Here's the thing. If she said turkey tetrazzini, I'd be I'd like, go, what is going on around here? I go, I already ordered my entree. <laughs> I go, thank you. Next time I'll have that as my entree. Okay, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll replace it. Then I'll replace it. When, you know how, I just saw it on your face. You know how excited you get when they go, we have potatoes. Oh, I love it. And then I you go, And you go, what kind? And if she says vinegar based, you go, god damn it. If she goes mayo based, she goes, tradish. Come on, what are we, animals? I go, oh my god, let's get it going. I have never once ever in, in in as a main course option in a restaurant gotten excited about a casserole on a menu. I've never even seen a casserole on a menu except lasagna. Maybe it's coming. <sighs> that is it's dark stuff. We're going to maybe maybe, maybe uh, we're going <laughs> to maybe uh, there's a new restaurant coming that's specifically just casseroles. Look, you might have something there. Honestly, you might honestly that, that, I don't think that's a bad idea. If you had a really good chef. It's kitschy enough. Oh my God. That's a pet rock idea. Like, yeah. get in, get your million, get out. <laughs> to reference then, heat once again, take the money, yeah, you feel get that the score, coming. and get again, <laughs> leave town. <laughs> That's great. Please open up next door. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna do. Dude. Oh, that I'd collab with you. <laughs> The, uh, we're gonna look at that. How's that not the battle winner when Joe goes? Oh, that's a good idea. I'll collab with you. <laughs> we're gonna go to the phones. So we so we go we go to hear what people are saying, and mm-hmm. then we'll do closing arguments. Uh, it's hard to go wrong with salad, babe. If it was called Joe Lid, it might be a different story. All right, I get it. Very funny. P.S. Joe, I love you. Thank you, sir. Uh, salads. I didn't even get this. People are going to put sal into salads. Oh, yeah. Fun. Uh, somebody just wrote casseroles, and they capitalized A-S-S. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the winner. I think that might be the restaurant name. Just have chicks with fat dunkers. Guys, give me one second. Just- okay, ready? Salad makes you feel better about the other food you're about to consume. Wow, these guys are talking about green salad, and which was on the table. We didn't even get into it. Casserole, babes, that's a meal. Salads are great as an app, though. Yeah. I, listen, I don't want to act like I'm besmirching salads. Love a macaroni salad. Love a potato salad. Love a Caesar salad. But I'm talking about <laughs> an entree. No one brings salad when your uncle dies. Yep. <laughs> True. <laughs> exactly. Casseroles equal death. Team salad. Oh, that's a one-two. Damn, dude. The guy he got replied. Me. He. he uh, yeah. That was. I was. All right. The, no, the first guy was being pro casserole. It's a comfort food. Casserole are worse than the name casserole. Uh, I don't get that. This is a hard one because there are gross salads and gross casseroles. Casseroles are made by people who have given them given up on themselves and on life. I wouldn't disagree with that. <laughs> Broccoli casserole, sweet potato casserole, salads are 
the food my food eats. We've heard that argument before, but it's not a bad argument. Casseroles can take a walk. If I wanted a bunch of mushed up trash in a pan, I'd go get skillet queso at Chili's. Uh, By the way, you, I think you can consider skillet queso a casserole. That's what she, I think that's what they're saying, well, right? Well, then thank you. Thank you for adding to my point. This is a I great point from, from Colette. I can pick out the stuff I don't like from a salad. That's a great point. Yeah. That is, you can't do again, that with casserole. Heat, heat analogy, a casserole is the heist. You're either in or you're yeah, out. Yeah, you're in or out. <laughs> you get a slice of that casserole, you got to go through that whole casserole. Yeah. That is a good point. Yeah. This is it. Right now, I need a decision right now. In or out, do you <laughs> want this slice of casserole? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. That's a good point. Uh, this is... Oh, uh, wait. That's, uh, aside from the green bean, casseroles can take a walk. Oh, green bean casseroles. Phenomenal. That is, and what a great side dish. That's my favorite side dish of all time, and I forgot. I completely forgot. At that's Thanksgiving. Right. That's the, at 95 years old, that's the only thing my grandma can still throw. Yeah, at Thanksgiving, that's my favorite. It's great. I'm like, somebody better have made it. Turkey with... Oh, and a slice of cranberry? Casseroles are made up of everything that no one wanted to eat in the first place, so you throw it into a pan and cook it, hoping it's eatable. They keep saying pan. It's not a pan. It's, it's a, a dish. dish. Yeah. Casseroles are the cake of non-dessert food. Most salads are just sad excuses. That's interesting. That is interesting, and I never thought of casserole as a cake. <sighs> wow. It's baked. Here's a good one for you. Is shepherd's pie a casserole? If yes. so, that's it right there yes. for the win. Shepherd wow. and meat, shepherd's pie, meat pies, those are casseroles. Imagine, I, would, I would go as far as to say a chicken pot pie is a casserole. You got carrots, you, peas. Yeah. Imagine, Thank you, sir. Whoever that brave angel was. Chloe says, imagine if you turned up at Thanksgiving with a salad. Yeah, imagine if, Chloe. It'd actually be nice to have no, something uh, healthy on the table. No, they're like, why are you bringing Labor Day shit when we're, we're, when we're celebrating Thanksgiving? No one has ever gotten excited about any kind of salad unless one is getting tossed casseroles all day. Oh, my casserole family's strong. We're baked together. The crunchy part of every top, the top of every casserole gives me life. God, I love good breadcrumbs on the top or something crunchy. No one is satisfied eating a salad ever. Yep. That's not true. That's uh, not true. It just takes more salad to satisfy you. Well, this kid's bringing up tater tot casserole. Yeah, why not? I ain't never had it, but I want it. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the party, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, here's the thing about a casserole lifestyle, as everyone knows this. Casserole lifestyle, you welcome all things. We're ready, we're ready for anything. Salads, they have... Dan, you might have won this. They have some I mean, rules. I'm, I'm just reading the, the responses here. Let's give our win to at the Wellington for cast with ass or rolls. Which, That's by the way, I want to talk to you. Follow, off, I, want to fo I want to talk to Wellington. Wait, hold on a second. Follow Jake at the Wellington 9. At the Wellington 9. He's our winner today. And Jake, you and I have to have a conversation going forward about the business idea of making the restaurant casseroles. Where girls, it's like, hoot, it's like hooters. Just girls with big dumpers bring you very, casseroles. Very, very clever. I love it. I love it. All right. Closing arguments. I like a food that brings people together. That comforts that fulfills and that doesn't take a lot to pull off. Yeah, so you want to bring together people with the least amount of love possible. No. That's I don't what, want them to, what it says. No, I don't want them to work hard. I want them to, hey, give me your tired, your poor. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? This great nation. Uh huh. And this great nation is a casserole. And we got to get is. back to being a great casserole. Yeah. Well, Dan... This great nation is a casserole, and it's a shit show. And it's a shit show for a reason. But when it's because warm, when you it's start great. telling everybody that they're all chefs, you get casseroles. And guess you what? You start letting anybody <laughs> think they know how to cook, you're getting nothing but casseroles. Some guy saying, I threw peas and gummy bears into a dish and <laughs> baked it at 350. That's a dish. No, it's not. It's a casserole. <laughs> all right? Well, Salads. Ta well, take my soul and throw me in a white glove with a red nose and eyes on it. <laughs> Salads are harder to make. No. Salads are healthier for you. That's true. And salads aren't often, aren't always as delicious as casseroles. But that's why this country is on its knees right now. Because people only want the easy way out. The easy thing to swallow. Well, if you want to make this place great, folks, you're going to have to work for it. And salads are the work. Joe? 
the rent is just too damn high. <laughs> Food is expensive. Gas is astronomical. And maybe a nice corner slice of a warm casserole with some bread crumbs on top, something crunchy, then warm and hot. Oh, you're, you're into bread crumbs. You're into expensive ingredients. I, I want to make a potato salad. I need three things. Salt, mayo, and potatoes. And I got it. I'm Honestly, done. Honestly, from where I'm sitting, <laughs> that sounds like a cold casserole. <laughs> All right. Dan, plug whatever you want to plug, and then we and then we just do the humble pie segment. Uh, DanSoder dot com for all live tour dates at DanSoder on Instagram and Twitter. I'm on the road. I'll be going to D.C., Dallas, Houston, a bunch of places, Cleveland. So DanSoder dot com for tickets. Joe DeRosa Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I was. Am I doing the math right, pimp? This is the week of September fifth. Now this yep. comes out Memorial Day, right? Yep. Or Labor Day, I mean. Uh, I believe, folks, uh, and after that, I'm all over the place in the fall. I'm back on the road, folks. I'm touring. By the way, touring with a show. I'm not just coming at you, throwing new stuff at you. I never, uh, I, pro- I never promised you a rose garden is the name of the show. It's a full hour. It's got a theme. It's. I'm very proud of it. It might be the best thing I've ever done. Anyway, come see me, Joe DeRosa Info, for all tickets and show information. JoeyRosesNYC.com, where we are right now. Come see us. Order from us. Get delivery. It's really, really good. Yes. It's very, very good, and I'm not, I fucking love Joe's sandwiches. Uh, we are open Tuesday through Sunday. Come see us. And then... Oh, also Bonfire. Listen it. to Bonfire. Oh, yeah. And listen Joe's to- on it all the time. I'm yeah. on it all the time. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, humble pie segment. Ready? You ready? The winner with 52% is casseroles. Motherfucker! <laughs> Baked and delicious. Just like me. That's rematch territory. That is. That is. That's rematch territory. So we'll have you back at with some Sal? point with Sal. When and Sal we'll, and I and we'll make rematch peace it. off air. <laughs> oh, God. That fucking garbage. He's going to go casserole. That, f- that garbage guppy bottom feeder. I love him. I love him. <laughs> we'll 100% pick casserole. And you know what we'll do? soup over salad, that trash. I would too. Uh, <laughs> and, and when Sal and I defeat you in the rematch... I'm going to bring a lovely casserole over to his house, and we're going to eat it while watching wrestling. Dan, if there was a lovely casserole, it wasn't made by you. Yes, I know it, that much. I'll make, the, uh, I'll make my mama's lasagna. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, how dare you. Uh, all right. You have to close the show by saying I still love you. I still love you. I love you, too. I love you very much. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking taste buds.